Hey everyone, John here from ContraBIM and thanks for taking a few minutes today to check out this video. I'll be introducing the brand new C5D Systems Estimating Toolkit, which we're so excited about. It's faster and easier to use than ever and it's really the result of different user feedback that we've received over the past few years on our previous builds of C5D. So we've taken those requests and we've turned it into this new product and I think it's really going to help a lot of you take advantage of model-based estimating, model-based quantification, and really taking your BIM projects in ARCHICAD to the next level. So thanks for being here. Let's go ahead and we'll jump into a quick demonstration and I'll introduce you to the new C5D systems. All right, so the biggest change to C5D this year is we've actually taken it from a single product and turned it into a suite of toolkits. Now, all of these work the same. They're all built on the same uh, foundational attributes within ARCHICAD, which makes it really easy to use one or another all at the same time. Um, and really, the we've broken these out to suit different times when you may want to do different analysis in a project. So we have different users who want more analysis on the front end and other users who want more analysis on the back end. So uh, this is how we're going to address those different user needs. So the first package here is called CRE. This is a commercial real estate modeling workflow. So it's great for producing uh, areas and analysis of those for entitlements as well as financial modeling. So this is a brand new tool, really excited about this. Uh, systems here is really the tool that we see probably 75 to 80 percent of ARCHICAD users uh, taking advantage of. Um, so this is the tool that really works well during schematic design and design development for that early cost estimating and quantity verification. It's built on cost assemblies, which we'll talk a little bit more about here in a few minutes. Uh, but this is what I'm super excited to introduce today is the systems tool because it's the first release. It's already out. And I think that uh, it's going to help a lot of ARCHICAD users really jump into 5D and take advantage of this. So the next package here is called trades. And this is actually uh, what the previous versions of C5D was del delivered as is really more of a uh, construction document bidding level of detail. So it has a lot more reports than systems um, and it really breaks things down more into the materials and trade based takeoffs. So uh, this we are working on right now and will be out in about another month. So finally, we have a brand new tool also that's called Track. Now this is more for taking the whole effort during the estimating process and uh, taking all those numbers and projecting them out over the course of construction. So this will produce monthly reports and help manage the progress on a project. So, okay, let's take a quick look and uh, dive a little bit deeper into systems now. All right, so the first point I wanna make about systems is it's easier to learn and easier to use than ever. So the training program we've set up here, you can actually complete the entire thing in a day if you wanted. Uh, the videos are short and easy to digest. Uh, we really introduce all the fundamentals first and then dive you into the setup. Uh, the next point here is the systems reporting structure is more compressed than ever. So we're only running 22 reports here. They're all built on exactly the same criteria. So if you go in and assign model elements to the system code, it's going to show up on these reports. And the great thing about this is it's combining now a lot of different uh, trades of work into these different building systems. That's why we call this whole reporting workflow systems is because it's organizes the building systems, and it's not so much trade uh, dependent as it is more function and location in your project. So it's really easy to kind of translate this, and I think for international users, it's a little bit easier to relate to your own classifications as well. So for example, here with superstructure, we're listing concrete, precast, uh, structural steel, wood framing, anything related to the structure here, all of this content can be listed on the same report. For exterior enclosure, uh, we can list anything relating to the envelope of the building. So uh, our exterior walls, of course, 
any type of window or door that is part of that envelope all gets listed here onto this single report set up for our exterior enclosure. Same thing with interiors here. So we have all of our interior partitions and everything else that's relating to that interior build out. So, okay, the next point I wanna make is we've introduced some smart expression-based properties that really help us with both the uh, takeoff process as well as cost calculations. So you can see here, we have a new section called quantity takeoff. And what this is doing is it's going through and it will align different model element types. So uh, walls, columns, objects, it'll take all those similar quantities and map them for us. So what this allows us to do is to take a takeoff value, multiply it by a unit cost and create a calculated cost. So that's really powerful stuff. The next step is we've added new quantity factors. So if you want to make adjustments to either the takeoff value or the calculated cost, you can simply start making adjustments to the factors themselves. So in this case, we have a takeoff value. We can apply a quantity factor and you can see how this automatically gets applied to that takeoff so that we can increase that if we'd like. So quantity and waste factors work exactly the same. They get multiplied into our takeoff value and we can add these on top of each other if we want. So lots of flexibility here. Setting them back to one just goes back to default and it doesn't change anything from our base value. Uh, similarly here with our cost calculations, um, we have these different cost factors. So uh, difficulty, geographic, location, inflation, uh, some of those are similar, but you can use them in different ways. These will actually update and adjust our calculated costs to include uh, 5%, 10%, whatever we want to adjust for. So what's great with this is um, you have the flexibility of adding these either on an element by element basis, or if we set everything back to default here, we can actually set this on a global project wide uh, basis. So we go to the property manager, we can change in this case, our geographic factor to 1.1, which would add 10% or 1.15, which would add 15% premium. And what that does is it'll automatically get applied to any model, model element where the setting here is default. So just to show you this other wall down here, this also will include that factor as well. So really excited about these factors. I think it's gonna help a lot of people make adjustments. Okay, we've also built out a new method for tracking and managing unit costs. So uh, we've introduced a new option set for creating a cost variable here. So under this cost source, you can pick and choose whether you wanna use a base unit cost as in this case, which is being pulled from the top unit cost we can see here. Um, so as we change this value, it's going to change our unit cost uh, variable, or we can start using different sources. So if we wanna use a composite unit cost, this will pull from a different value down below here. And this of course is built up using uh, components. So uh, finishes, framing on both sides, uh, insulation, um, coatings. We can take all these different uh, kind of typical uh, component assemblies and calculate them through and then pick and choose when we want to use that by selecting that option set. We can also do the same thing with demolition. So uh, if we have a cost to dem demolish here and we want to demolish an element, we can just assign the unit cost there. We also have the ability to go into details. So if we want to break it down by material, labor, equipment, and with a markup, we can do that here as well. And just by setting that it's going to use that in the cost calculation. So lots of different options here. Flexibility is the name of the game and uh, easier to use than ever. So we've also rebuilt from the ground up a new Excel template. So here you can see, this is obviously built to accept the systems. Only 22 reports here, so it's very compressed. Uh, each of the different system reports here is set up exactly the same where we have our data source to the right being highlighted uh, when we refresh, we can clear that source out and refresh it back in just with a uh, 
a quick uh, short key. Uh, we have a takeoff bin here in the middle, which just aligns all of our information, makes it easy to manage from Archicad. So we don't have to worry about moving columns around in Archicad. It's always going to be mapped to these uh, columns that we have here. And all this gets mapped through and summed up into our set line items based on our link codes that we establish. We can also report this in different ways. So we can report this by, you know, dollar per story. And what's great is all this just flows directly through into our new system summary sheet here. Uh, you can roll this all the way up and have a nice clean uh, view of your overall project costs. Uh, we also have multiple sources here. <clears throat> so we have a model-based source and a target-based source. Uh, what's great about this uh, manual target-based estimating is you can go through and create your projections uh, before you ever even start a new Archicad project. So you can set your quantities and your unit costs based on the unit you define. Uh, you can override these with gross area costs up here in the headline as well just by plugging a value here it's going to override everything down below and so this just makes it really easy and flexible to plug costs at different points in time this section here is all just mapped to our, our system sheets and then we can pick and choose here to the right which source we want to actually carry into our total so it will tell us whether it's a model based or target based depending on we, if we choose source one or source two. And so this just is a really easy way to balance between a manual estimating approach and a model based estimating approach. So lots of flexibility here. It's easy to use and uh, pretty easy to set up as well. So, okay, the last point I wanna make here is that with this new workflow, it's easier than ever to add international classifications. So all we need to do is import those classifications into Archicad. We can set up these link codes here and we can take all our uh, model quantities and just link them through into our, uh, our alternative summary sheet here. So you can see this is kind of like a big matrix and you can see where the cost is actually coming from because of some conditional formatting we've added. So uh, it'll highlight and make it really easy to show you how your costs are being mapped to whatever type of line items you create here. All we need to do is have a single code here to the left to link through and create that bridge from our uh, system takeoffs. We also have up here at the top some air checking to make sure that these values total the same totals from those system sheets as well as the uh, the other summary and all this is just easy to use and I'm really excited about this version. So thanks for taking a few minutes to watch this video. Hopefully it was informative and gives you a good idea how this new systems cost assemblies workflow is set up. We'll definitely be coming back here with a few more example videos here soon, just showing how this works in practice. And yeah, thanks for taking the time to watch this and uh, we will catch you on another video here very soon. If you have any questions on the C5D systems, then please just shoot us an email or leave us a comment and we will get back to you right away. Thanks again and we will catch you very soon.